Jesus, we pray and ask all things. Thank God. Amen. Evangelist uh, Candace, it is in your hands. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another Bible study. Hopefully you guys will be interactive with me tonight. If I would be able to share my screen, that would be greatly appreciated. You got it, Sister Candace. All right, we're going to go straight into the lesson and asking discussion questions. So how do you feel when you have to wait a long time for something you really want? This is an interactive Bible study, so please feel free to participate and to answer. Well, I, I, I can only speak for myself, Sister Candace, when I've got to wait a long time for something. Um, honestly, um, sometimes, I'm second guessing what I've asked for. Maybe I've asked for too much. Maybe what I've asked for does not line up with the will of God. And maybe um, I'm not deserving enough. And it, it all often makes me want to guess or wonder whether I should change my request. But that, that's just me. I, I can't speak for anybody else. Would anybody else like to share? Well, I, I feel like me, Sister Candace, I feel like sometimes good things come to those who wait. Mm. Good things come to those who wait. So, you know, if you're waiting, I always felt like if I'm waiting on something, it's going to be good when I get it. It's going to be good when I get it. I like that. I'm only speaking for Patsy. I don't know how other people feel. Sounds good, Sister Patsy. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? How do you feel when you have to wait? How do you feel? I feel angry because I'm impatient. Angry. Ooh. That's that's Jordan. That's it. I mean, he he lied. Impatient is. Okay, feels angry. As always, our discussion questions always tie to the Bible lesson. So let's get deeper. What does it mean to wait on the Lord? I mean, I feel like it's more than right to wait on the Lord because he waited on you. Mm. So why you can't wait on him? Oh, that's deep. He <laughs> wait on you. So why Woo. can't you wait on him? Yes, I'm like, that, that, that's the whole Bible said we can go home now. <laughs> <laughs> that's the lesson. That's it. Amen. Repeat that again. He said she said he waits on you. So why can't you wait on him? That's right. Amen. I think uh, waiting on the Lord comes from a place of maturity, too, because um, uh, I think uh, Ty Trivet has said it in the song, if he's done it before, he can do it again. And so uh, knowing that God has a stellar reputation, um, waiting is not going to hurt me. Waiting is going to help me. Mm. Amen, Pastor. Mm. Waiting doesn't hurt me. It is going to help me. Let's read the question again. It says, what does it mean to wait on the Lord? What does it mean to wait? So we mentioned waiting doesn't hurt us. It helps us. But what does it mean to wait?
In other words, what's the definition of wait? <laughs> and what do we do when we wait? That shows that you have patience. Mm. Shows that you have patience. All right. Let's recap last week's Bible study. Last week we came from Psalms 27, verses 1 through 6. Let's just read it again for those who weren't here. It read, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though on a host should a camp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me, and this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to acquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle, Shall he hide me? He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted above my enemies round about me. Therefore, will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yeah, I will sing praises unto the Lord. And the word of the Lord is blessed. Last week, we talked about who God is. That sometimes when we go through different trials and tribulations, we have to encourage ourselves where we are. We have to remind ourselves who God is. And if he said he will do something, he will do it. We talked about the Lord being our light. We talked about encouraging ourselves. The Lord is our strength. We talk about God being our healer, God being who he says he's going to be and having hope and faith in who God is. So when we go through different circumstances that we can encourage ourselves. Let's go further into the scripture, right? This is Psalm 27, 1 through 6. Let's read the rest of the of the, uh, uh, of the stanzas, right? We're gonna, Tonight's study, we're going to focus on verses 7 through 14. Would anybody like to volunteer to read? Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou says, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me, but put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Mm. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. As always, what stands out to you about this scripture? Nothing, nothing stands out to anybody. It seems that waiting is the order of the day. Mm. There's an old song that says you can't hurry God, you just have to wait. You got to trust him and give him time, no matter how long it takes, for he's a God that you can't hurry. He'll be there, don't you worry. He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Again, waiting is the order of the day. Waiting is the order of the day. Hmm. Mm. 
Anybody else? Waiting is the order of the day. What else do we get from the scripture? David is asking the Lord for instructions. Mm. He realizes that even in his waiting, he can't do this by himself, but he needs guidance. And so he's asking God for the very thing that he needs. Asking God for the very thing that he needs. What else do we see? That's my participants tonight. Where's the saints? Nothing else gets out to anyone else. I don't, I don't really want to be the one to do all the talking. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, others will chime in. So Natasha, Brother Jordan, Brother, uh, Aaron, uh, Brother Patsy Ann. But I, you know, I, I, what I see here is that he also is aware that uh, God is greater than he. Mm. So he, he talks about hide not your face from me. Don't put me away in anger. You know, um, you know, don't leave me. Don't forsake me. The God of my salvation. I recognize who you are. And, and I, I don't want you to look at how messed up I am to determine whether you're going to stick around for me or not. When I look at it, let's look at verse by verse seven. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. If we look at the first six verses, which we studied last week, David was trusting God. He wasn't saying who God is. He was making his request known. Then verse 7, he comes and says, hear, O Lord, when I cry. So he's saying again, like, Lord, hear me. <laughs> hear me when I'm crying. Have mercy upon me. A stance of forgive, asking for forgiveness. And he's saying, Lord, answer me. Verse 8, when thou said, seek my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. I feel like sometimes we try to justify our prayers and justify us waiting with on God by telling him what, what we have been doing. <laughs> Lord, Lord, I've, I've been teaching this Bible study. I've been faithful and going. We should try to justify it. Lord, I've been doing all these things. So, Lord, you ought to bless me. Some of us, we, we do this. I don't know about y'all. I definitely have been a God. God I've, been, I've been faithful in this. So, Lord, answer this prayer. So, so he goes into this place of one humility, uh, of humbling himself, asking God to hear his prayers. Um, saying, Lord, I'm seeking your face, right? The Lord, I'm seeking your face. Verse 9, hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me. O God, am I a salvation? Lord, don't leave me here. Lord, I've been praying. I, I, I've been seeking your, your face. Lord, 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 I got some petitions before you. Lord, I got these things but, uh, before your throne. And Lord, don't leave me here. Don't forsake me. And he goes, verse 10, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. I feel like many times we've been forsaken by people. He's like, uh, yeah, when well, my father, my but Lord, you, you don't forsake. 
reminding God of his promises. You don't leave us where we are. He said, the, the Bible says, never have I ever seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. He said, other people may forsake me, but God, not you. <laughs> 11, teach me thy ways, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. We know when we study the verse, the first couple of verses that David was, was, was in the midst uh, of dealing with his enemies. And his prayer was that the Lord will lead him, that, that the Lord will be his light, that the Lord will be his salvation, and that the Lord will allow him to come out victorious against his enemies. 12, deliver me not into the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me and are such as breathe out cruelty. Verse 13, which is the one that I like, I had fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have fainted. Simply means he is confident in the Lord. He he said in this point, I would have fallen. I would have given up. I would have done these things, but I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And in the first 14, where he encourages, wait on the Lord. First, he had to encourage himself. First, he had to speak into his situation. First, he had to speak what speak to the things he was going through, encourage himself that God is and that God can and that God will do. Now he's coming back and encourage himself, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. When we look at this chapter fully, we see David with his prayer, encouraging himself, reminding himself who God is, making his prayer request known. Then he's telling himself, sometimes we just got to wait on God. What happens when we prayed? What happens when we We've done all that we can. What happens when we have the faith and we have the hope and we believe that God can, and now he's telling us to wait. What happens now? Praise the Lord, um, Sister Candice. Praise the Lord, True Vine. Um, Sister Gwen, you know, I was just sitting here and I was just thinking about waiting, how waiting isn't a very um, desirable um, characteristic or attribute that we desire. You know, we live in a time where, you know, we have microwave, you know, we could cook a meal that would normally take hours. Now we can do it in a microwave in minutes and it don't taste the same. It don't have the same flavor, but yet and still because we're in a hurry, you know, some of us are in a hurry to get where God wants us to take us, not understanding that it's a process. And David, you know, although he was anointed and called to be king while, you know, Saul was still on the throne, he still had to go through a process. And through this process, you know, David experienced a lot of um, issues, you know, emotional. And, I, and I'm, I'm taking conjecture, you know, in, in this psalm here, he's talking about, you know, he's speaking, like, Lord is my light and, you know, my salvation, whom should, you know, I fear, you know, and then later on down here, he starts to plead with God, you know, wait a minute, I'm pleading with you. I have the New Living Translation. So it reads, listen to my pleading, O Lord, be merciful and answer me. What, what happened <laughs> that David now is questioning whether or not God is even hearing what he's putting before him. And that's yeah. us sometimes. We make our requests known to God and we think God then turned a deaf ear, but really what he's trying to do is, is, is prepare us and make us wait. Because if he gives it to us before time, we might not appreciate it. Mm. We might not nurture it the way that we want, you know? And I'll use a perfect example. Sometimes we want certain things in our lives, right? And God is like, and we get, Lord, you know, I asked you for this 10 years ago. How come it hasn't manifested itself? And what you got to understand, God is saying, wait, because guess what? You ain't, you're not really ready. 
but we never think ourselves as not being ready. We think we're ready because we've put the petition before God. Everybody's a bishop. Everybody's an apostle. Everybody's an archbishop. Everybody's a pastor. Everybody, you know, and they haven't even sat nowhere under nobody to get any teaching or training because we don't want to wait. Mm. We take a cake out of the oven before it's done and before you test it. You're going to have a cake that's cooked on the outside, but it's going to be not done on the inside. Because we're in a hurry. You want to eat the cake, right? Sometimes the cake has to cool. And you say, the instructions say, put the cake on the, the cooling rack, right? We, mm. we we like, okay, no, I got to put the frosting on it. And then when we prematurely put the frosting, it melts and becomes a sloppy mess because it wasn't ready to be iced. So David, you know, is like he's going through a lot of things in this psalm. But in the end, he still remains, you know, confident that God will be with him. Mm. And he's saying to the people, now he can say, you know what? Wait, now he can encourage other people. Sometimes we have to go through our own turmoil before we can encourage people because we've got to come to the conclusion that, you know what, in spite of, I'm still going to wait on God. It don't look like I'm waiting, but I'm going to wait. That's good, um, Elder Gwen, when you talk about waiting not being the, the favorite posture for people to take. Um, we want things all here and now. Um, and uh, uh, we want to take the shortcut. But what, I, what I'm learning as I continue to grow in God is God will always bring prepared people to a place or thing that's already prepared. So if, uh, what, am I, what am I saying? Um, he's going to have that place ready. The question is, are you ready for it? Because it's ready for you, but are you ready for it? So God knows who we are. He knows what we're made of. He knows if I give it to you now, you won't be able to handle it. So I got to let you go through a process where I can work on you and develop you so that when I give it to you or place you there, it won't cause you to lose your mind. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to wait. No, no, I mean, honestly, no, nobody really wants to mm -hmm. wait. Everybody wants what they want when they want it. You know, I, I hear people talking about, I'm ready to get married, and you, you're really not ready to get married. <laughs> you, you, you're in love with the idea of being married, but you're not a qualified candidate for marriage. So you, you got to let God work on you so you can become that qualified candidate. I think of it like a road trip, right? We know, you know, we're going on a road trip. And you know that we're, you know, 500 miles away from our destination, but we want to get there, you know, in less than five. Look, I want to get there in two hours because guess what? I don't want to go through the states that I need to go through. Why can't I just skip the states? That's why some people take the air because you know what? Yeah, you know. It cuts down on time because guess what? And please don't give me a connecting flight. I want a direct flight so that when I get on and we take off, 
The next time we come down, I'm at my destination. But sometimes that is not always the best way to travel. Sometimes we need to take some connections. Sometimes we need to stop in between because in that in between, we have an opportunity to reflect on where we're coming from and where we're going. It's like having children in a car. We, we ain't there yet. You know, growing up as a little child, it just seemed like it was forever to go from, from Jamaica Avenue to Rockaway Boulevard, when it's really not that long of a trip. But when you're small, your perception is off of distance and time. And what God is saying that when we're in him, we've got to recognize that his distance as time is not like the world's distance and time. And that we've got to be able to have uh, the ability to wait some things don't come and, you know, and God forbid we get a prophetic utterance from somebody right away. We run in and we've not even sought God about whether or not look really, but we, we taken off and running. We got our Bible, our, our LLC church thing, you know, we got, we, we gone and we opening up our, our storefront mm. without consulting God. And what I like about this, and, and David is saying that, you know, he's saying that he would have fainted. In your version, it, it says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Who faints? <laughs> but, you know, in the New Living Translation, it says, um, let me see with these bad glasses. In the New Living he says, yet I am confident that I will see the Lord's goodness. It don't even mention the, the fainting. He says, while I'm here in the land of the living. Sometimes when we're reading cross translations, we have to be careful because we don't want to lose the essence of what the original King James Version is saying. But David is basically saying, you know, he, he was almost to the point where he's, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, I'm a faint. But then he pulled himself together. Mm. I think something that really encourages David and his waiting. Verse 13. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. What he really is saying is, I trust that God was going to be good to me. I put my hope and my trust in, in the Lord. And because of this, I can wait. Because my faith is in God, because my hope is in God, because I believe he's going to do what he said he's going to do, because I know him to be my light and my salvation, because I know him to be the strength of my life, because I know he's done it for me before, and I trust and believe he's going to do it for me again. So I can, so, 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 so out of this, he says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen my heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. Well, what do we do when we wait? How do you wait? I How hope we're praying. <laughs> I, I hope you're praying too. <laughs> How are you waiting? You know, I think about um, when I go to a restaurant and um, I've already been seated and here comes this person with a towel over their arm and they want to take my order. They are called a waiter and they are at my service. And so I, I believe that while 
we are occupying time looking for God to do whatever it is that we want him to do, we need to be at his service. Lord, what can I do for you? Mm. <clears throat> Brother Mike, I haven't heard from you. Angela's Banks. The Saints are quiet tonight. Yes, they are. Perhaps they're, they're just soaking it in. Wait on the Lord. And don't just don't just sit there twiddling your thumbs, but have a good have a good mindset. Be of good courage, knowing mm -hmm. that he's going to strengthen your heart. If you wait, he's going to give you some strength. He's going to give you some lasting power. He's going to mm -hmm. give you some endurance. Hallelujah. He's going to give you the ability to keep going in your other areas without losing your mind. That, that, that 13th verse really blessed me because he could have passed out. He could have passed out unless he had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. He could see that God has been good to other people. He, had, he can go back in his mind and recollect the things that God did for him. And so in his waiting, he's not waiting um, trying to catch his breath. He's not waiting, um, uh, pacing up and down the floor like he's about to lose it. But he is in a confident place knowing that if he waits on the Lord and be of good courage, the Lord's going to strengthen his heart. Mm -hmm. When you study about horses, a horse, uh, especially those that run uh, in races, after running for the first um, uh, 15 minutes, they're no longer running on endurance, but they're running on heart. Their, their, their cardiac muscle is, is doing the driving. And so, it, yes, he may be tired, he may be exhausted, but his heart is telling him to keep going. And so we have to learn how to run on heart. And he says he's going to strengthen our heart so we can keep going. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the strength in our heart for us to keep going. That's good. Why is it important that we wait? Waiting is an exercise of our faith. Lord, I don't see it. I don't feel it. I don't know where it's coming from. I seem to be by myself, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold on because without faith, it's impossible to please. If I want God to be pleased with me, I got to show him that I'm willing to hold on to nothing until something gets there. Mm. That could be challenging when the clock keeps ticking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes as women, you know, women, you know, I'll use women as an example. Women say, 
oh, you know, my biological clock is clicking out. I better hurry up and do this right away. For those that are past the biological clock, it don't matter. But I'm talking about for those young women who the clock is ticking for, you know, they feel that, you know, if I don't do this or accomplish this by this age or date um, in my life or period of my life, I better just go ahead and help God. And God is saying, don't go ahead of me. <laughs> you know, that would be one reason why we should wait so that we don't uh, make, you know, ungodly, um, poor decisions that could sort of change the trajectory of our life or, you know, just put a hiccup there somewhere along the way that could be avoided if we would have just waited on God. Perfect example, you know, Abram and Sarai. You know, the promise was made that he would be the father of many nations, but he was getting up in age. Sarah was getting up in age and both of them was getting up in age. So, you know, it wasn't the way that it used to be. So he decided, you know, you know, they decided to take it upon themselves. Well, we gonna help God. God don't need our help. If he would have just waited for the promise, then they wouldn't have gotten into the mess that they got into. You know, God is, you know, God is telling us to just trust him in every aspect of our lives and that he's not going to leave us out there. He, he wants to give us the desires of our heart, but he wants to make sure that when he gives us the desires of our heart, he's blessed it, he's ordained it. Because if you don't, God knows you're going to have another migraine headache. You're going to have, you know, a lot of frustration. Um, you're going to have a lot of, you know, anxiety and, 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 and issues coming up. So, you know, before you move, before you make a move, I plead with you or urge you to, you know, uh, seek God. You know, with God, there is no ticking clock. His time is not our time. The world's time is the world's time, not God's time. God is not bound by time. <laughs> we are, but he's not. So he, 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 li he exists outside of time to create a scenario in time that we might trust in his timeless ability to bring us to a place where we can receive exactly what it is that he has for us, but we can only get there through time. Mm. So, so, uh, and, and I'm not trying to confuse anybody, but, but I, I, I will hope that we would get the point that 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 God is 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 it he he's constantly saying to us, hold on, wait a minute, slow down. Let patience have a perfect work. There's something there's something about waiting that brings about a greater a greater benefit. You're not going to get uh uh you're not going to get wine if you squeeze some grapes today into a cup. That that that's not going to be wine. That's going to be some grape juice. Mm. But it's through time and fermentation that it becomes something even greater. And the longer the period of time exists for that juice, the greater the wine becomes. So the long... The, we, we, we talk about a spans of time. We, we don't want, we don't want to wait, you know, like, like you, you said earlier, some, somebody may want to be a bishop. They won't be a, a pastor. They won't be, no, they don't want to be pastors no more. They don't want to be, they don't want to be pastors anymore. They, they want to be prophets. They want to be bishops. They want to be apostles. But you, you, at some point you've got to sit under somebody and receive teaching. You've got to be, be mentored. You've got to go through your own journey where you have your back against the wall because some revelation is not going to come until you go through something. And that going through 
through the process of time is what brings us to that greater place. Maybe we can pull Elder Tiffany out of, out of hiding and she can say something. Oh, I'm not hiding. I just crept in. Uh, it looks like um, Psalms 27, but I didn't know what particular verse. Um, it, it looks like Psalms 27. Yeah. So, but I didn't know um, what particular verse or whatever we were um, discussing. 7, 14. Okay, so are we talking about waiting on the Lord as in um, preparing to see what he's doing and being patient or waiting as in what are we doing while we wait? You can talk about either or. Okay, so um, my daughter asked me a question a couple of days ago. She says, if you're waiting for the waiter, doesn't that make you a waiter also? Um, That's good. That's because good. If, you're, if you're waiting, you're a waiter. That's your baby. Um, mm -hmm. She's I here. Love I love her. <laughs> well, well, she deep. She going to be deep. Sister D. Yeah. Her nickname, Sister D. Yeah. <laughs> she's already there. She's, la she's laughing. Um, um, so... Uh, we look we look at it like we can take it from looking at it from two perspectives. We wait, but what do we do while we're waiting on the Lord? We know that something is going to happen, but what happens in that process of waiting? Do we sit still and do nothing? Because what happens while we're sitting and we're not necessarily... Um, being still but what are we doing in the process of waiting for the lord um to fulfill whatever it is that he has asked us to fulfill we continue to trust we continue to believe and most importantly we continue to serve so we become the waiter while we wait we don't just sit and do nothing in anticipation for God's promise to come to pass. What happens when we go to a restaurant? Mm. Someone comes to the table and they ask us what we will have. They ask us usually, would you like to start out with a drink? And then maybe an appetizer and then the entree and then the dessert. But what are they doing in the time that we're waiting for it? They're serving. They're serving. So in the midst of us waiting for the promise, whatever it is that God has for us to come to pass, we have to be in a position to serve. So we wait while we wait. We wait while we wait. Can I respond? Sister Jade is deep. I love her. Listen, <laughs> we started something. You know why? Because I hear even as we are waiting, we come to the restaurant with an appetite. Correct. I don't, you come to the restaurant because you expect to eat, right? Participate. Oh, At least yeah. most of us come to, we don't come to the restaurant to look at the menu to say, I don't want anything because you wasted the space and the time. Right. Move yourself out the way because you're going to be presented with the menu. And on that right. menu, you can read it and go down and you can put your request to the waiter that comes. But mm -hmm. what you're doing is while you put your order in, you you don't leave the restaurant. Some people do. So, but you don't leave the table in the restaurant. You're preparing yourself to receive the meal. Some of us go to the bathroom to sanitize our hands. Some of us, you know, we, we, you know, we get ourselves prepared mm. to receive what is to be brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if we are already full, we nibble and mess over. But we have to, a hunger and a thirst 
for what God has for us. So we come with an appetite. That's why it's very hard for some people to receive because they done filled up with other stuff. Correct. Hallelujah. They filled up with other junk. So that when they come to die, Jesus is come and die. But you know what? We come, but we can't die because we full. Mm-hmm. And we have no appetite. Mm-hmm. Y'all help me tonight. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to, you know, this thing is deep. Your mm-hmm. daughter started something. Mm-hmm. Some of us come Sunday after Sunday and we so full, hallelujah, with the crap of the world, if I may use that term. I know it's not a spiritual term. But we fed ourselves with so much junk. I don't know about you, but if you eat a candy bar before dinner, it will ruin your appetite. Mm-hmm. So that when the dinner is prepared, you're like, no, nah, I'm not I want anything. Because you don't put the sugar in it. Sugar will always cut an appetite temporarily. And then two hours later, you're going to be back in the kitchen talking about, well, we ain't got nothing to eat. You should have ate when dinner was served. All right, let me shut up. Okay, go ahead. I want to recognize those that are following us on Facebook Live. And one person said, uh, the lesson reminds me of a song. Hello? Uh, when we when we wait, wait on the Lord, we will try to learn our lesson. And in God's timing, he will show us what to do, what to say, when we wait, only when we wait. And um, and another person said it's it's a microwave era we are living in. Everybody wants everything in an instant. Nobody wants to wait for anything anymore, and they don't understand that it only gets better when it's marinated. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We've we've heard you use that analogy, Pastor Ross. Like, and and we've seen it for them for you know for ourselves. Anybody who grew up. Um, I hate to use this terminology, but old school, like I did. Um, when my grandma used to cook, she cooked Saturday all day, but we couldn't eat it till Sunday mm-hmm. after church. We hey, couldn't eat it till man. Sunday after church. You know, we didn't nook nothing and put it in the microwave. Still to this day, my kids are like microwave because how we were brought up or you no. Know, we prepared the food, we cooked it, it baked it, or it was in a slow cooker, or it was in, you know, in the oven. And it tastes so much better that way. You put stuff in the microwave, you got that rubber feel, it changes the texture, it changes the taste. It's just not the same. It's just not the same. But when it, uh, whoever the person is that said it, but when it's marinated, it unsat, the seasoning then got in it real good. Mm. It done got in it real good. Sometimes, depending on what it is, it tastes better the second day because the seasoning done got it in it and it's and it done settled. You, you, you know, you know, it's the same as as in in the presence of God. Just wait on him. Don't try to do everything overnight. Pastor said it. They don't want to be pastors no more. They want the big titles. They want the big titles. These babies ain't finished high school good. And they overseers and bishops and apostles and, and sitting on somebody else's front row. You ain't got no following. You ain't got no Holy Ghost. You ain't got no, but, but you but you on somebody's front row, garbed Be up. Be careful. Oh, garbed up. I'm sorry. I didn't mean, to, well, yes, I did. But um, I don't want to offend <laughs> anybody. But that's, 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 right. that's the reality. That's the reality of it. And then, and then you have those who really have a hunger and a thirst after God, but they get turned off by what they see or what they've experienced. And they're like, you know, I can't do that. So maybe I shouldn't come to God at all. No, 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 no. This is your own personal thing. And listen, baby, if God said, wait, wait on him, because these people ain't waiting on God, they're falling flat on their faces. And then they got to return all the way back to the beginning. They could have got it right the first time, but you want to run through. Mm. Praise the Lord. You you breaking up a little bit, but we can hear you. Yeah. I was listening to um, 
what you were saying, Elder Lark. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then Sister Gwen. And I thought about that thing. When we go some, when you go, when you're in a restaurant, you go expecting something, right? You're expecting, yeah. you're sitting and waiting with expectation. And yeah. you don't get up and leave because you're expecting something. So it's the same when we have asked God and we petition him for something, we are expected. Correct. So I just believe that it matters what your posture is while you wait. While you wait, absolutely. Your posture while you wait can demonstrate your level of faith. Mm -hmm. Patient, am I just going to throw in the towel? Am I going to be murmuring, complaining? God desires us to have to wait, wait. but while we are waiting, we're still going to glorify him. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to say, Lord, I love you. Even though he mm -hmm. hasn't delivered my promise yet, he still promised. Mm -hmm. So I trust him because he is the promise giver. I trust that he's going to deliver. He's going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to praise mm -hmm. him while I, while I wait. Mm -hmm. I'm going to still glorify him while I wait. I'm still going to serve while mm -hmm. I wait. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to serve. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to serve him. While it's not our timing, but it's God's timing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I heard, I heard, I heard you preach one time, Evangelist Banks. I'll worship while I wait. Worship while I wait. Yeah, yeah. And so, and when you go to a restaurant that's worth anything, watch this now. They at, and 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 somebody said it already. The first thing they ask you is, you know, would you like a drink? Because they can bring the drink to the table in less than three minutes. Then they ask you about an appetizer, which can come in another two or three minutes also. And the appetizer is not enough to fill you up. It's just to start getting your palate activated and ready for what's coming. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so again, you got to wait. And if you wait, he may give you an appetizer. And he may give you something to drink. Might give you a little taste. Give you a little taste. Oh, taste and see that oh. the Lord is good. I got a little sample. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. She said, We're going to praise while we wait. We're going to have faith and trust and give Him praise and glory and worship while we wait. So, are we yeah. going to complain? No, no complaining. Are we going to murmur while we're waiting? Are we going to complain and, and not trust God while we wait? I wouldn't advise that. Just look at the children of Israel. Yeah, I wouldn't advise it. <laughs> I would not advise that. A nine-day journey became a 40-year trip. Oh, God. Because they didn't have the faith in God and they complained on the way. A nine-day journey became a 40-year trip. So I guess the question that I would ask, um, what what would be what would be the benefit of murmuring and complaining? If there's no if there are no benefits to it, and we have to take that mindset on, there are no benefits to murmuring and complaining uh, while we wait. There are benefits to serving and believing and having faith and, and, and worshiping and praising while we wait. There are benefits to that stuff. There are no benefits. And it delays the process, the murmuring and complaining from nine to four, huh? What mm -hmm. should it take nine days? Took a lot longer. That cause murmuring and complaining causes an unnecessary delay. Unnecessary delay. I'm sorry, Evangelist McCoy. This is good, girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> Unnecessary delay. Because we complained along the way. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I don't want no unnecessary the, 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 the delays. Yeah. Yeah. 
Some of us, we've been waiting long enough and we still complaining. Come on, come on. We still don't have the faith and trust in God. Frustrating the grace of God because we can't wait. Because we mm. can't wait. Try to microwave our food. Try to get, mm. try to get it fast in a hurry. You put that steak in the microwave, you ruined it. You have ruined it. You ruined it because you couldn't wait. Why is it okay for us to wait? Because we see in scripture where it says Jeremiah 29 and 11 that God knows the plans oh, and the thoughts that he has <laughs> towards you. <laughs> he knows the plans. <laughs> he knows the thoughts that he has towards you. Thoughts to give you hope in a future. And sometimes those plans evolved involves us waiting. I don't know if you actually studied the chapter of Jeremiah 29. We can, we can do that at, at a later date. But if you really study the scripture, <laughs> the children of Israel were, were actually in bondage and they were praying, Lord, free us from this bondage. And God sends the prophet to say, yeah, we're going to free you. I'm going to free you in 70 years. Not tomorrow. You're praying for freedom. Yeah, I'm coming in 70 years. But then he says, why? And he says, why why you're there? Why why are you waiting for those 70 years to come? I want you to pray for those who have rule over you. I want you to serve while you're there. Why? Because I want you to I want you to learn something while you're waiting for me to do what I said I'm going to do. Some of us, the reason why the reason why we're still waiting, because we haven't learned the lesson. Oh, God. The reason why you're still waiting is because God's trying to teach you how to trust him. But you, instead of trusting him, you're, you're complaining in your memory. Some of us, God made some promises to us. And God is good on his word. But he's just trying to make sure we get the point before he gives the blessing. But it, well, he tells us, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. My favorite, my favorite question, where do we go from here? What do we do now? We don't just learn what to do while we wait. We actually apply what to do while we wait. Ah. Apply what you do. This is actually one of my favorite script, favorite questions to ask the group. Because the question is really, how do we apply the scripture to our lives? Correct. Where do we go from here? Mm-hmm. What do you do now? We serve while we wait. We serve while we wait. But somebody else said, we worship while we wait. Mm-hmm. We tr- praise while we wait. We encourage ourselves while we wait. What else do we do while we wait? We trust in the Lord. Yeah. We lean and depend on God. Why? Because his ways are not our ways. So we just put our faith in God. Where we go from here? We learn how to trust. We learn how to put our faith. We know and we believe that as we're waiting, that God has our best intentions in mind. I think what makes waiting easier is that although I may want X, Y, and Z, when God goes according to his plans, it's way better than what I expected. Sometimes you got to wait for that gourmet meal. But because you waited for that steak to sear, you waited for them to marinate it and get all the seasonings through. Because you waited, it comes out way better than than that fast, quick, in a hurry. There's a difference between that baked mac and cheese and that stovetop foolishness. Right. It comes out a lot better when you wait. 
So let's encourage it. Let's be encouraged tonight that our waiting is not in vain. Let us be encouraged to trust God as we wait. Let us be encouraged to not complain, but to put our faith and our hope completely in God as we wait. Yeah, that's all I really have. Is there, is there any more questions, comments, or concerns? Because if not, we're going to end in prayer. Yeah, God, we thank you for the opportunity to learn and study your scripture. Yeah, God, we thank you for the lessons we're learning that you are good, that you are kind. And that even when we have to wait on you, that you have our best intentions in mind. So God, teach us how to wait. Teach us how to put our faith and our trust completely in you. Help us to lean and depend in, on you. Help us to, while we wait, to continue to praise, to continue to worship, to continue to lift up your name. Lord, we don't want to just wait any old way, but Lord, we want to wait in anticipation that you will do what you said you would do. God, we trust and believe that the scripture that tells us if you did it before, you can do it again. You're the same God who did it before. So, Lord, we trust and believe that you will do it again. Lord, we would have thanked him, but we trust and believe that we will see the goodness of the Lord. So, Lord, while we wait, we put our hope in you. While we wait, we put our faith in you. And while we wait, we lean and depend on you. So God, we just thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We thank you in advance for the ways you are moving. God, we praise you. We honor you. We glorify you. We magnify you, God. We lift you up. We glorify you. Why? Because while we're waiting, we're praising. As we're waiting, we're glorifying. And as we're waiting, we're lifting you up. As we're waiting, we're giving you worship. Why? Because when we glorify you, it makes the waiting easy. So, Lord, we bless your name. We glorify you. We magnify you. We honor you. Lord, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And thank you again. Lord, and thank you again. For such a wonderful lesson, we uh, we bless God for teaching us how to wait. Uh, I don't know about you, but uh, as Evangelist Bank says, I'm going to praise Him while I wait. And uh, we are just thanking God for all of you that have joined us, either by Facebook Live, YouTube, or here on Zoom, or you're watching the playback. Know this: that if you can wait with the right posture. You can, you can better believe that uh, the promise is going to be coming sooner than later. And so we bless God for all of you and everything that's been done and said. I'm not going to uh, belabor the point. Join us for noonday prayer for the rest of the week. Join us for inspirational service on Friday night. And uh, let's see what God does for us. I, I thank God for you all. And remember, there's nothing that you're going to face that you and God can't handle because you and God together are unstoppable. I love you in Jesus' name and have a good night.